Don't Be a Monster, Dick. Written and performed by Jordan Crumbine. Chapter 1. Richard and Tess. Jesus fucking Christ! Can you believe this shit? I mean, look, here, it's literally a prosthetic nipple. Fully erect. We all have to wear these under our tank tops now, as if the tank tops themselves weren't revealing enough. Here, touch it. Richard choked a little as Tess pushed the prosthetic nipple into his face. This wasn't how he imagined Tess would finally offer up a nipple. Something he had imagined far more than he cared to admit. Richard quickly wiped at the corner of his mouth, mopping up a dribble of red wine and hoping she hadn't noticed. He always knew they were in for a long-haul bitch session when she split the bottle of wine between two glasses, pouring a little extra into her own, of course. He poked the offered nipple with the tip of his finger. It was hard and rubbery, just as described. It was flesh-colored, a single flat shade that lacked the darker details of an actual nipple but somehow included all the tiny little bumps in the areola. It must have been molded from a cast of a real-life erect nipple. Richard nodded and tried to respond, but only managed to stammer. That's, uh, uh, yeah, um... You feel how fucking hard that shit is? Tess continued, oblivious to Richard's awkward shifting on the stool. It is just like a real nipple, and I have to wear that on top of my own. Look, there's a little indent on the back for my real nips. She turned the prosthetic nipple around, and Richard nodded again, confirming the indent on the backside. No, touch it, seriously. She grabbed his finger and pushed it into the little dimple. That's where my nipple goes. And that's what I have rubbing against me during my entire shift, just so assholes can leer at artificial pokies all fucking night long. Richard felt a stirring in his pants and blinked. Yep, that's where her real nipple went inside the fake nipple. But really? Was that all it took to awaken the trouser snake? Sticking a finger into a fake fucking nipple? Sure, it was Tess's fake nipple, where her own nipple had poked, rubbed, and probably gotten erect. But it was still fake. And she offered it to me. She, she took my hand and made me touch it. Richard swallowed a lump in his throat, took a hearty sip from his glass, and willed the blood to retreat from his penis. He hoped his forehead wasn't getting shiny with sweat, but he could feel it getting warm. You tell me, does that shit really do anything for you? Tess asked before taking an aggressive sip of her wine. Even though the answer was yes, Richard opened his mouth to respond in the negative. This was his role the part he was only too happy to play during a Tess Taylor bitch session. It was what his longtime friend needed from him. And even though Richard longed for more, he was content to just be needed. Tess waved a dismissive hand, swallowing her wine before placing the glass back on the counter. Never mind, don't answer that. Of course it does. You have a dick. You're all the same. Richard tried to protest. He didn't want to be lumped in with all the other men in her life. After all, why else was he sitting there? Why else had they been friends and such dependable roommates since college? He tried to protest, but she was just ramping up. Why can't you assholes leave something to the imagination? 
A little mystery can be exciting too, you know, but no, fuck me, right? Erect prosthetic nipples pointing all over the place and a barely there painted on uniform that's basically inviting every fucking Tom, Dick, and Harry to just fucking yeah, reach around and start grabbing me like I'm just a, 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 a. Tess stuttered and stumbled, half her wine already gone. A goddamn thing prancing around solely for their amusement and in sexual titillation. I mean, sure, it's just a playful pat here and an unintentional brush of the hand there. Richard bristled underneath the stoic mask he had long since mastered for when Tess recapped her day. This was all she needed from him. To listen. But inside, a storm had begun to rage. He was angry at every asshole who ever laid a hand on her, or even looked at her with lust in their eyes. He was angry at Tess for putting up with the bullshit, for lowering herself to work at another low-wage gig waiting tables. She was so much goddamn better than that. Worst of all, Richard was angry at himself for not being able to tell her any of these things. This was his role. This was what Tess needed from him. At least, that's what Richard had convinced himself of after all these years. So, he wore his mask, ever mindful of his expression, and what the slightest quirk of an eyebrow, the tiniest frown, or a longing glance might convey. But do you know what happens other times? Tess asked, those perfectly sculpted eyebrows shooting up aggressively, and her stunning blue eyes locking on Richard's with such intimacy that the blood began returning to his penis. She didn't wait for him to respond. Last night, all I did was turn around, Richard. That was it. I'm serving a table. She swung her arms out, away from the counter, to demonstrate. And then I turned around. She pivoted back to Richard. And some inbred, redneck, fucking mullet-sporting douche nut straight up copped an ass cheek. Richard's mask cracked just a little as Tess grabbed at her hip with her free hand. Fucking douche nuts, indeed. All I did was turn, and this fucker's hand was right there, waiting for me, she said, cupping a hand out to grab an imaginary ass. And in case you were wondering if it was all just an unfortunate mistake, Oh, hey, how did my hand get there? He gives it a sharp squeeze and a little jiggle before sharing a fucking laugh with his Neanderthal butt buddies. Richard could definitely feel the heat on his face now. He took another sip of wine and tried not to think about other people's hands on Tess's ass. He tried not to think about her ass. But once those perfect curves bubbled up, there was no escaping it. For Richard, everything about Tess was the definition of perfection. From those blonde locks and blue eyes, to every gentle curve he could lose himself in forever, if just given the opportunity. Curves he had secretly studied in the privacy of his own room across the entire history of her Instagram feed, curves he knew as intimately as any person could know without ever physically touching them. Fuck. Shit. Richard could feel his dick pressing against his pants. He shifted his weight and crossed his legs tightly, hoping this desperate act of erection suppression wasn't as obvious as it felt. And you know what I did, Richard? Tess asked, leaning back as a strange, defeated sadness clouded her flawless, bronzed complexion. I fucking winked at him, Richard. I winked. 
She took a long sip, and Richard waited, just like a good listener was supposed to. The fuck is wrong with me, dude? Tess asked, staring off into the living room of their apartment. She didn't expect a response, and Richard offered none. I fucking winked. Then I chuckled. Yeah, I laughed right along with the Cro-Magnon cock gallery, all in the admittedly naive and short-sighted hope that these gene pool rejects would at very least compensate me for my abject humiliation in addition to their blatant misogyny, which, yeah, oh yeah, I know, Richard, basically makes me a goddamn fucking prostitute. And you know what happened? He did. He had heard the story plenty of times before. But he had his role to play, and made his eyebrows move sympathetically. No, no tip? No fucking tip. Tess shook her head slowly as she spoke. The boss is putting this new note at the bottom of the bill that makes it sound like we're a goddamn fucking McDonald's, and there's no need to tip the waitstaff. He wanted to say, Quit! Tell them to fuck off. You don't need that fucking place. You're too good for that fucking place. You're a talented dancer, always have been, and you need to stop holding yourself back. You need to believe you deserve more, and then you need to go out and grab it for yourself. Instead, after it became clear Tess had temporarily ran out of steam, Richard said, Jesus, I, I mean, Tess, that's a... Uh... Jesus. Have you, um, have you told Brad about it? I mean, with the groping and the, uh, mm, uh, nipples? After an acerbic burst of laughter, Tess smiled warmly at Richard. He knew it was demeaning. She thought him a fool for even asking. But that smile still made him melt just a little. Have you met Brad? She asked. I mean, you work with the dude. Richard held up a hand. I hardly... We work at the same place. Brad would blow a fucking gasket if he heard even half the shit that happened at Nips and Sips. She said with an eye roll and a fresh tip of the wine glass. Richard rubbed his eyebrow. That stoic mask dropping in a genuine moment of confusion. Yeah, but he's your boyfriend, Tess, and you've got to be honest with... Richard, dude, I love you. He slipped the mask on just in time. Hearing those words from those lips would be enough to break any mortal man. But you do not understand. Brad would straight up start murdering people, Tess explained. I mean, come on, that's why this, you, me, wine, that's why all of this means so much to me. She lifted those perfect, narrow shoulders in a gesture of total helplessness, making Richard want to wrap her in a protective hug and never let go. Instead, he took a shallow breath and squeezed his leg against his heart on. I don't know what I would do if I couldn't talk to you about this shit, she said, her face sincere. Richard's heart twisted in his chest. This was what she needed from him. He knew that. Always had. He cleared his throat and struggled to keep the right tone of voice. <clears throat> well, uh... Why don't you, uh, just quit, you know? I mean, with the whole tip thing, right? You're already losing money at a, an already shitty job. And do what? Tess let out a long, wispy sigh, and Richard forced his gaze back to her eyes. If he stared at those lips for too long, he wouldn't be able to stop thinking about kissing them, which would be the softest sweetest thing he could possibly imagine. No, she said firmly. I only have to put up with it a little bit longer. Richard had been staring at her eyes 
thinking about her lips and barely hearing what she was saying. On the one hand, it's not like he hadn't heard it a dozen times before. On the other hand, wait, a little bit longer? The mask fell for what he hoped was only a quick second. Richard's eyes blinked rapidly as he processed Tess's words entirely too slowly. Brad is interviewing for that manager position, and when he gets it... W what There's an open manager position in testing and QA? The words came out without any thought. Richard, the ever-patient sounding board, had taken a back seat. Tess swirled the remains of her wine at the bottom of the glass. She hadn't noticed Richard's change in tone, nor did she register his confusion. Yeah, and Brad says it's practically a done deal, so if he gets the promotion, well, that pretty much means, you know. A small smile pulled at her lips, and she looked sideways at Richard, wiggling her eyebrows as if he was in on some big secret. Richard moistened his lips, desperately trying to pull the mask back up. This was a lot of information all at once. He had been looking for growth opportunities at work and had even expressed to his boss a desire to map out a career path. Somehow, he had been oblivious to an open manager position. Wait, had it even been posted? And what did she mean about Brad assuming the promotion was a done deal? Did that mean Richard wouldn't even get a chance to submit his name? How could this opportunity have sailed right by Richard without him even knowing it? And now Tess, beautiful, perfect Tess, was wiggling her eyebrows at him as if she was confiding some intimate secret. His head was spinning. Richard blinked again and shook his head. What does that, uh, with your eyebrows? He pointed awkwardly at her face. What, uh, what is that supposed to mean? Tess laughed again. This time, Richard felt the familiar, yet still uncomfortable sting of being left out of the joke. Of being laughed at instead of with. She turned away from her empty wine glass and faced Richard directly, smiling sweetly at her dumb little friend. Now Richard could definitely feel his face burning. He's gonna finally pop the question, Richard, Tess said slowly, taking his hands in hers. Tess was radiating pure, drunken joy, and Richard's penis wilted. After Brad gets the promotion, he'll finally be making enough money for us to get engaged, she said. Once we get engaged, we can finally move in together. Richard swallowed. Suddenly, the apartment felt way smaller than it actually was. How was he only hearing about this now? And then, then, I'll finally be free to kiss nips and sips and these stupid fucking prosthetic nipples goodbye. Tess let go of Richard's hand, good they were becoming a sweaty mess, and scooped up the pair of nipples sitting on the counter. She looked from the nipples to Richard, giving him a mischievous glance before reaching out to the other side of the counter and turning her hand over. The prosthetic nipples fell into the sink with muted bumps. Tess reached around the counter and flicked on the garbage disposal. The machinery spun up, grinding down on the rubber nipples. Richard winced at the sound. His own nipples felt warm as they tingled with a phantom discomfort. When the grinding smoothed out, Tess flipped the switch again. Since her own wine glass was already empty, she grabbed Richard's and took a healthy victory gulp. Um, uh, aren't you, uh... Richard stuttered, 
unsure of what he even wanted to say. Won't, uh, won't you need those for your next shift? Tess looked at him, dragged down from a temporary high, and sighed. She responded flatly. They issued everyone a set of a dozen total. Fucking nipples for days, Richard. Nipples for days. <laughs>